In making decisions about treatment for pulmonary arterial hypertension in association with CTD, I have a general bias based on published literature in my experience to be relatively aggressive because of the coexisting connective tissue disease and the ongoing risk that it may be affecting the pulmonary vasculature. In addition, those patients can be at risk for developing lung scarring, what's called interstitial lung disease. So I recommend getting out in front of the treatment of the pulmonary hypertension as aggressively as possible based on risk assessment. There's lots of ways to do that now. So in the 2015 published guidelines on pulmonary hypertension, the European Respiratory Society and the European Society of Cardiology basically created three groups of risk for patients low, intermediate, and high based on symptoms, some of the blood tests that we do like the BNP, their six minute walk distance, and results of additional diagnostic testing from the echocardiogram or the right heart catheterization, for example. And those patients that are in that lower risk category should start as soon as possible after diagnosis on at least two oral medications based on results out of the AMBITION trial showing that that's beneficial to the patients. Any patient with connective tissue disease associated pulmonary arterial hypertension that has a higher risk than that, I want to move aggressively to perhaps triple therapy, which might involve an oral prostacyclin type medication. Oral triprostanil is a prostacyclin analog. Selexapag is a prostacyclin receptor agonist. Those are options. Or perhaps even infusion therapy for the more severely affected. Another way to do the risk stratification is what's called a reveal risk score. And an updated reveal risk score was published this past year in CHESS in 2019. We participated in that update in my practice in terms of looking at the data and refining it in a way that allows you to actually do a numeric score. And patients with a high score are at higher risk of having poor outcome. So those patients you would be more aggressive versus those with a low re reveal risk score who have a better prognosis. You could start with the two oral medications that I mentioned. And the ones in the AMBITION trial that were shown to work together were ambrosantin and tadalafil. Ambrosantin's in the endothelin receptor antagonist class, and tadalafil's in the PDE5 inhibitor class, which blocks the breakdown of nitric oxide. Over the last several years, more trials have become available to showing benefit of more than one PAH medication for most types of pulmonary hypertension. Certainly in practice, we had used more than one medication for many patients, often in a sequential fashion. You would start one medication, reevaluate, and then determine whether or not an additional medication was useful. Trials that have allowed FDA approval for additional medication such as seraphin, which showed that macetantin has benefit for patients, demonstrated that that's true even if they were already on what we refer to as background PAH medication. So there are many patients, about two-thirds, were already on medication. And adding the macetantin showed additional benefit by reducing serious events, such as hospitalization. A second trial that was similar in that regard is called Griffin with about 1,156 patients that showed adding Selexapag, which is a prostaglandin receptor agonist, has benefit for patients, even though 80% of the patients in that trial were on background therapy. And if you looked at the breakdown of those patients, Many were on more than one drug. So it really confirmed that multidrug therapy has an additional benefit. 
on the heels of those two large trials that allowed approval of Masatantin and then ultimately Selexapag, was the Ambition trial. And in a nutshell, it took two drugs, Ambrosantin and Tadalafil, and in the study, patients were randomized to have both drugs started as soon as possible after diagnosis, and it compared patients who just had Ambrosantin, single drug, and a third group of patients who just had Tadalafil as a single drug. So at the end of the day, the scientists compared the patients who had both drugs started as soon as possible to the patients pooled together, lumped together, that had either single drug therapy with Ambrosantin or Tadalafil. And there was benefit with starting two medications as early as possible, what we call upfront dual oral combination therapy. Now, in full transparency, it took about two months to get the patients up to full dose of both the Ambrosantin and the Tadalafil in the upfront group. So sometimes it takes a little while to get drug approval, make sure patients tolerate these medications, to get them on the combination therapy. But the message is, do that as quickly as possible because it's been shown to be beneficial for these patients.